Hello everyone, my name is Barbara and welcome back to Wiki Design. If you're new here, Wiki Design is a web design agency that I run with my husband, Mark. On this channel, we post a lot of web design and development tutorials. We talk a lot about WordPress, about the Elementor page builder, and give a lot of small business tips. So if that's something that interests you, be sure to hit subscribe because we post new videos here every week. Today I'm doing something a little bit different on this channel. I am always looking at websites and design blogs to get inspiration for our projects. Now this might just be because I'm a designer and developer, but whenever I see something cool on a website or a design blog, my first instinct is to try to figure out how that was done. We use the Elementor page builder to make all of our websites. So when I see something that I find interesting on a website, I always wonder if there's a way that I can recreate it using Elementor. So in this video, that's what we're going to do. We're going to look at a website with some interesting design elements and see if I can recreate it in Elementor. The site that we're going to be looking at is use-dot-com. I came across this website a few weeks ago and I just love the design. I think it's so well done. Bravo to the designers and developers that made this website because mwah, it is awesome. One thing that I really like about this website is the navigation menu. While this menu is clean and simple, it's a lot different than your typical style navigation menu, especially the ones that you would see using Elementor. So I want to see if I can recreate this using the page builder. Before I take a deeper dive into this menu, I want to mention that I will be using Elementor Pro for this video. And if you are using the free version, a lot of the elements that you see me using will not be included. So it's more reason to get Elementor Pro because you get a lot more features and you can do a lot of really cool things. I'm also going to be using my branding. So our logo for Wiki Design, our colors and our fonts. We'll also be using the pages that are on our current menu system. So we're not going to be using the ones that they have on use-dot-com. We're just going to be focusing on creating a similar structure, but we're not going to be using the exact same elements that they have on their site. Let's take a look at this menu system in more detail so we can see how everything is structured and how everything works. This is a full page menu, meaning that it takes up the entire screen. All the real estate is dedicated to the menu. We have the logo on the left and the close button on the right. Now we do have these two columns for the different pages. We also have a column over here for social links. So right off the bat, I'm thinking that this is going to be really difficult to create using Elementor's nav widget because there isn't really a way to separate things in two columns. There isn't a way to add this functionality with the social links and trying to add these numbers that are next to the links I think will be really difficult as well. I don't think that the nav widget is the way to go for this. We're going to have to come up with another idea. What I think would be better to use would be the pop-up widget because we're going to have more control over the design elements. We can add as many columns as we want. We'll be able to do some cool effects, some cool animations, and I think we'll be getting closer to the look of this by using the pop-up widget versus trying to do this with the navigation menu widget. If we look a little bit further, if I close this out, you can see that there are some cool animations happening. So this icon is actually animating. When you roll over and roll out, it has an animation, which is another reason why I think that using the pop-up widget would be better than trying to do this in the navigation menu. In Elementor's default navigation widget, there isn't an option to change the icon to something that is animated. But what we could do with the pop-up is use Lottie to create an icon that we can then animate. And when you click on it, it will open up the pop-up window like this works. There's also some cool animations happening on this and I think we'll be able to achieve those animations by using the pop-up widget because we'll be able to animate everything in versus using the navigation menu where we don't have those options. 
If we do an inspect element on this menu system, we can get more information about how the HTML is structured. And this is built using an unordered list. When we design this using Elementor, it's not going to be an unordered list. It will likely just be columns, but I like to always see how things are structured. So we do have a uh, link here. And then if we drill down even further, this is uh, using spans. So it will be a little bit different in Elementor, but I'm going to try to keep everything as close to this example as possible. So I will use span tags to make these links here and this link here likely, and we'll just kind of go from there. Like I mentioned before, I'm going to use a pop-up widget to create this menu system. I think that that is going to be much easier than trying to manipulate the CSS code of the navigation widget that's built into Elementor. I'm sure I could achieve a similar result doing that, but it isn't something that would be easy enough to hand off to a client. My clients don't know CSS code, they're not developers, and I do like to hand off projects whenever I can without having to do much customizations. If I can do everything in Elementor, that means that they'll be able to edit it themselves. So I think this is the best way to go. I didn't want to waste your time creating pages and creating a new menu, so I already went ahead and did that. So let's just go ahead and add a new pop-up. I'm just going to call this pop-up main menu. Let's close out of the library and we're left with a blank canvas to work with. Now let's go back to this menu system again. So we have this column up here that we're going to need to add for our logo and then we have two columns here and then a column on this side so i think we're going to need to start with a three column layout and then inside the layout i think we're going to need to possibly add an inner column because we have these elements side by side so i think that's the way i want to go with this let's start by making this pop-up full screen. So I'm going to go to settings. I'm going to change the width to 100% vertical width. And then I'm going to change this to say fit to screen. So now we have a full screen pop-up window. The next thing that I want to do is create a structure with three columns because going back to this layout, we have one column here, one column here, and then a column for the social links. So inside these two columns, I think I'm going to put an intersection because I want to be able to put the number on the left and then the link to the page on the right. I think that's the best way to do it because we have to make sure that it stacks correctly on mobile. If we go back to this page and then we just shrink this down. You can see that everything stacks really nicely. We have the number and then the name of the page side by side. So if we do an intersection, I think we'll be able to achieve that effect. I'm going to make this full width and I'm just going to make this column on the right hand side pretty small for now. We'll probably adjust that later down the road, but I just kind of want to get it out of the way because I'm going to be focusing on creating the actual links. So let's put in an inner section in here. Now, if we did two columns, I don't think it would stack correctly because this would stack. So I think what we have to actually do is remove one of the columns in the inner section and then use inline positioning to position the elements within this section. So let me explain what I'm talking about. Let me drag over a heading. I'm just going to change that to say one. Need to change the color of the type. I'm just gonna make this a span. For now, this might change down the road depending on how things work, but I think a span will work fine. And then let's drag over another heading widget and again, we'll change the color to black for right now. And I'm just going to call this home. So right now these are on top of each other, but if we use inline positioning, we can get them to go side by side. So if I 
click on this and go to advanced then go to positioning and change the width to inline then you see how that changes if i do the same for this now they're side by side so we have to do some styling to this in order to get it to look more like the example but we're on the right track so if we go back to the number one and we add some padding to the right maybe like 100 pixels now we're getting closer to the actual look that we're trying to achieve. I'm going to also change this vertical alignment to middle so that brings it down into the middle of the text. So now we have to add a link to this uh, title so I'm just going to put in a link to my home page. So now we're getting somewhere. This is a link now and we just have to recreate this five more times in the two columns in order to really get the structure that we're looking for. So I went ahead and duplicated that section five more times and changed out the links to reflect the different pages. So now it's just a matter of styling this in order to make it look more like the example. So we need to adjust the font size, we need to create a background color, and do some more things in order to get it to look the way that we want. I can use the styling options within Elementor to get this to look more like our example. So let's get started on that. I'm going to add a background color to the entire section here. I'm just gonna use the color that Wikidesign uses, and then I'm going to change the color of this number. Instead of black, we'll make it a little bit of like a gray blue color. And then I'm going to just bump this up a tiny bit in size. Let's go back to the example and see what they have. So this is pretty small and this is really big. Um, let's just make this a little bit smaller. And I'm going to change the font to the font that we use. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. And I'm gonna do the same to this link. I'm gonna change it to white. I'll change the font. And then I'm gonna make this a lot bigger. I'll go with 80 for now. We might have to adjust that a little bit. But going back to the example, it looks pretty close to what they have. So I'm just going to repeat this process for all of the other links. Now that we have those set, I'm going to make this full screen. So I'm just going to go to this section, change the height to a min height and then do a vertical height. I'm gonna do about 90 because I do need to add the section for my logo. So I'm just gonna do that right now. I'm going to add one column section above this, make it full width, and I'm gonna add an image. do this white image because it's going to be the same color so let me just grab this color from here and we'll paste it onto this section and just align this to the left okay i think we're gonna have to make a couple more adjustments just to get the styling Right, we're also going to need to style up this 
X here for the closing, but things are looking pretty good. So I'm going to do some more styling adjustments on desktop and then I'll be right back. things styled up on desktop I still need to work out things on mobile devices but before I do that I want to add the social icons to this column so I wasn't really sure the best way to do this at first I thought maybe I should do a list but then I remembered that there is this feature within the social icons widget in Elementor that allows you to adjust columns and this is going to be really useful on mobile devices. So if we look at the menu again on desktop, it shows like this where it's on the right hand side and everything is stacked on top of each other. But if we shrink this down on mobile, you can see that they're in line. So what's really convenient about the social icon widget is that we can decide how many columns we want on desktop, tablet, and mobile devices. And if we do that and adjust accordingly, I can get that same effect without having to recreate another widget. So I think that's the best way to go. So let me just go ahead and add social icons here. And where it says columns for desktop, I'm going to select one. So that's gonna stack everything on top of each other. And obviously I need to change the styling, but let's take a look at what things look like on mobile. So we need to do some styling in terms of changing the font size for this so everything lines up correct. But let's scroll down to the bottom. If I go here, I can change the columns on mobile to three columns and now everything is in line just like our example. So this is a really convenient way to achieve this effect. I never like to repeat and hide things on mobile devices if I don't have to. So I really like this solution. So I'm going to style everything up and I'll be back soon. and did some adjustments, added some things, made sure everything looked good on tablet and mobile. So this is what it looks like on tablet and on mobile. So maybe a couple more final adjustments just to tweak a few things, but it's looking pretty good. I'm gonna go back to tablet and I wanna talk about this close icon because I know when I first started using the pop-up widgets in Elementor, I couldn't find where to style these. So it's actually under settings. So if you go to settings, you get settings for the entire pop-up. And then if you go to style, you can adjust the close button here. You have a few different things that you can adjust. I'm gonna adjust the size of it, make it a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to add a background color to it as well. So I'm just going to do kind of like a little bit of a transparent gray color. You can also change 
what things look like on the hover state as well. So for that, I'm going to just completely remove the background and we hover over it. You can see what it does. So it looks pretty cool. But let's go back to the example because theirs looks a little different. They have this padding around and there's this rounded corner. If I wanted to get it to look like that, I would have to add some CSS customizations because there isn't a way to add padding or a border radius around the icon with these settings. But we can totally do that. And I don't think that's too intrusive in terms of handing it off to a client. Likely they're probably never going to touch the close icon and it's just really like one line of code. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So I'm just gonna hit preview on this so we can see what it looks like in a new window. And then I'm just gonna inspect the element so I can get the name of the class. Looks like this is the name of the class here. I'm just gonna copy that and then I'll go to advanced and then under custom CSS, we'll just add that class and we'll add some padding and then a border radius. Okay. So I think that looks a lot more like the example and what we're going for. So I'm happy with how that looks. I'm happy with how the whole thing looks overall. I think that it really is pretty close to what we have in the example. But there are a few more things I think I can add to this to make it look even better. So let's actually go back to our example and close it out and then open it again. You'll see how everything kind of fades in and fades out. There's some cool animations going on. And we have the ability to add animations in Elementor. So I'm going to add some of those to make it look even more like our example. So if I go to our individual sections, I can add entrance animations to give it that similar effect. So if you go to advanced and then motion effects, I'm just gonna do fade in up and then I'm gonna change that to fast because it did come in pretty fast in the example. And then I can just copy and paste these settings and then add a delay for each one so that they kind of fade in in a sequence. So that's what I'm gonna do for that. And then I'm also going to fade in our logo as well. So I'm going to go again to motion effects. I'm just gonna do a fade in up on that, change that to fast. And I think that will give a pretty nice effect. So let me go ahead and add this to all the different links. I can also add an entrance and exit animation to the pop-up itself. So I'm going to go back to our settings and then I'm going to go to where it says entrance animation and do a fade in up on that. And then the exit animation, I'm going to do a fade out of down. So let's preview this to see how it looks. So I think that looks pretty good, but I want to increase the speed of it. So let's go back and just pull down this slider so it's only a half a second duration and then preview it again to see what it looks like. And I'm pretty happy with how that looks. Going back to the example, no, it is not exactly like the example, but Given the fact that we are building this in Elementor, we're not building this out custom, I'm pretty happy with the results. It's pretty great that you can do all of these customizations right within the Elementor page builder. So we're gonna go with it. And now we're going to get started on actually publishing this and making it work. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit publish on this. And when it comes to the conditions, triggers, and advanced rules, I don't have to worry about this because it's going to be triggered by somebody clicking 
the icon. So I'm actually just going to hit save and close and now it will be published live. So the next step is to create our header where the icon is that will click to trigger this pop-up. So I'm going to get out of here and I'm gonna to go to templates and we're gonna hit add new and we're gonna create a header template. I'll just call this main header. And from here, we'll have to create our header. So I'm going to create a two column structure. I'm going to make this full width. And then we're going to add in our logo. So I'm gonna drag over an image. Just gonna use our square logo. Just gonna drag this column down to make it a little bit smaller. And now we have to add our icon, but let's go back to our example. This icon animates, which means that they're using either an animated SVG or a Lottie animation. And what's really cool about Elementor is that there is a Lottie widget where you can do this, but I am not an animator. So in order for me to animate an icon like that, I would have to have some skills with something like After Effects, know how to use Lottie animations, and I don't know how to do that. That is something that I hope to learn more about next year. It's kind of on my agenda. But for the time being, I can actually go to a website and download some free Lottie animation icons. If you go to LottieFiles.com, they have tons of different Lottie animations available for your projects. And you can download these as JSON files and upload them to your site using the Lottie widget. So if you search this site, you just put in menu, you can see that there's tons of different cool animations and a lot of them are free for you to use. So if you're not an animator like me, definitely check this out. So I went ahead and saved a Lottie animation already. So I'm going to just drag over the Lottie widget and then I'm going to choose the one that I've added. You can see it shows up right here. So I'm just going to style this up a bit so it's a little bit bigger and we're going to change the settings of it so that it triggers the animation on hover. So when we hover, you can see that it starts to move. This is a really cool feature within Elementor. I'm so happy that they added something like this because it makes your projects look really cool. And even if you aren't an animator like me, you can use this feature within Elementor to get some really cool designs. So now that we have this triggered, on hover, I just need to add a link to it. So if I do custom URL here, I can use the dynamic tags, open this up as a pop-up, and then add my pop-up in here. The pop-up was called main menu, so I'm going to type that in. And now if I hit preview on this, what should happen is when I click this, it pops up. So how cool is that? I feel like we've created a very similar menu in terms of layout, in terms of looks, as what was in our example. So I'm really happy with how everything is working out. I'm going to make a couple more tweaks to this, change the size of this a little bit so it matches more the styling that is on our example, maybe change this a little bit as well, but I think we did a pretty good job.
So that's it for this challenge. Did we recreate it in Elementor? I think we did, we got pretty close. While there are some things that are a little bit different, I think the overall look is pretty much the same. And what's great about this is that I could hand this off to a client and they would easily be able to update and edit this as they see fit down the road. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you got some good information and maybe you can use something similar in one of your designs. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you get notified whenever we upload new videos like this one. We'll see you next time.